everyone and welcome to Live in the Creative Life. I'm your host, Linda Peterson. I'm so excited that you are joining me today and I'm so excited that you're celebrating spring right along with me today. Just the sound of the word spring is like a breath of fresh air to me. It's like warmth to my soul. Um, I am so ready to get rid of winter. Do you know that last week, this very same day, it was 10 below zero. That's 82 degrees colder. I am just ready to say goodbye to winter and welcome in spring all the bright, beautiful colors of spring, the new blooms of flowers, the smell of spring, the warmth of the sunshine. I just can't wait. I have an excellent show prepared for you today. This show is all about spring and blooming flowers. They're blooming everywhere. First up, I'm going to take you on a trip to the dollar store where we're going to find some materials to create a Bloomin' Pen project. Then my featured guest, Samantha Starr, is joining us to share with us a metal jewelry project. I know metal jewelry is one of your favorites. It's steampunk inspired and it's a metal jewelry brooch. Then we're going to head off to the kitchen where you'll get to meet my daughter, Mariah Welsh. We're going to craft up some cupcakes together. It's one of our favorite recipes. It's carrot cake cupcakes. And then finally I'm going to round out the show with an upcycled kind of a dumpster diving project where I'm going to show you how to take an old jar and embellish it with craft porcelain. We've got a lot of projects to share, a lot of blooming good times, so we better get the show on the road. When I was a little girl, a trip to the dime store was like heaven for me. Um, there was a little Ben Franklin store down the street from my grandma's house. She lived in St. Louis and she loved to go to Ben Franklin. And that was always a special day when I would get to spend time with my grandma and I knew if we went to the dime store, I was going to get a little 10 cent toy and I was gonna get a whole bag full of penny candy. Unfortunately, dime stores, they're not around anymore. That's a thing of the past. And now it seems like we take our kids to the dollar store. Well, you know, the dollar store can be a real treat for us too. In fact, that's exactly where you're going to find the materials you're going to need for my first project. It's a Bloomin' Pen Set. So to create your bloomin' pot full of pins, the first thing you're going to need is a four inch clay pot. And you can decorate this any way that you want. I just added some paint and some crackle glaze and gave it kind of an antique finish. So you're gonna set that off to the side for right now. Also, you'll need some clear tape, pair of scissors. This is floral tape, an ink pen. I'm just using the regular big round stick ink pens, nothing expensive here. You'll need a package of black beans, and then of course you're going to need your floral stem. So you'll need five or six different stems. The first thing you're going to do, and you might as well do this now before you forget like I do, is put a piece of tape over the hole in the bottom of your clay pot, and that way you don't have to worry about spilling the beans like I did the first time. So do that right now, paint your clay pot, set that off to the side, let that dry while you do the rest of the project. Very easy to do this. You're going to cut your stems apart so that you have separate stems and then you're going to just line up the base of your flower with your ink pen here. You might have to press that down a little bit. And I work directly off of the floral tape. If you've not used floral tape before, you um, stretch it as you twist, as you uh, wrap this around. And when you stretch it, it becomes really, really um, sticky. It sticks to itself. So you're just going to wrap this entire pin in floral tape. Now 
when you get to the top you can just snip it off stretch it and then just press it right back onto itself it'll stick down now you're going to come back in do the same thing with the bottom uh, it doesn't matter if your stem doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the pen like my did you can uh, you can make it go the entire length or you can just snip it off because you will have some shorter stems all right so now what you're going to do is you're just going to repeat this process for however many stems you want in your clay pot and then you're going to fill your clay pot with beans i don't know if you can see that just like i have here all right pop in your pin and you've got a decorative way to display your pins I bet you'll never have to worry about finding an ink pen again, especially if they're disguised like flowers. That's a good thing, because if you're like me, my kids walk off with my ink pens. You know, there are so many things that are beautiful about silk flowers. Two of my favorite things is that they don't die, and you don't have to water them. You just have to dust them off a little bit. But they add such a cheerful atmosphere to your home and add such a warm feeling that I love having them displayed in my home year round. Did you know that according to Women's World Magazine that just by looking at flowers you can actually lift your mood? That's amazing, especially they say if you look at sunflowers. I didn't know that, but I'm gonna have to try that. If you're interested how to create uh, silk flowers of your own, you might wanna check out my book, Arranging Silk Flowers, because it shows you step by step exactly how to create beautiful floral arrangements for any room in your house for any season of your home and it gives you some really quick tips on how to take care of those so if you're interested you can get an autographed copy on my website at lindapetersonlive.com well with spring we know there's going to be rain they say april showers bring may flowers but rainy days were a good thing when I was growing up. When I was a little girl, I remember sitting on my mom's bed and she would get out her jewelry box and I would get to go through it for hours. It would just intrigue me. She had all kinds of little trinkets in there and it was filled with brooches and uh, flower brooches, things that my grandma had given her. It, was, it, was, it just brings back good memories to even remember that. Here to share her vintage inspired metal brooch is my featured guest. And I'm excited to welcome Samantha Starr. Hi everyone, Samantha here. Thank you so much for joining us on Linda's show today. I'm very excited to share my project with you, which is a steampunk flower made out of metal that I found at the hardware store. I had this great shopping trip at the hardware store a few weeks ago where I went up and down just about every aisle driving my husband fatty looking for the perfect stuff to create a craft out of. So I know it's hard for you to see here, so I'm gonna switch down to craft cam so that you can see the supplies that I used and I'll take you through this project step by step. Here's what you'll need in order to create our craft today. I found at the hardware store some five by seven sheets of aluminum and you'll need a pair of scissors that are able to cut through the aluminum as well as a small pair of pliers, alcohol ink and an alcohol ink applicator. And as you can see on my flower, I have a jewel in the center as well as some metal findings on the leaf here. So in order to glue those on, we are going to need to use a glue gun. All right, so what I did first was I took a pencil and I roughly traced out what I wanted my flower to look like. Then I took my scissors and I trimmed around that flower. Now, when you're trimming around, you want to be careful because the metal can be sharp. And there we have it, our flower sheet. Set that aside, and then with a pencil, trace out a leaf shape. So I just usually do something like that, and cut around it as well. And what we're going to do next is we're going to do our alcohol inking. So grab your applicator, 
And I'm going to be using a color called Pool, which is sort of a turquoise color and a gold metallic color. Now with your metallic colors, you want to make sure to shake them up real well. Drop that on there. And then go ahead and cover your flower. All right, once you have inked up your flower with the alcohol ink, you can go ahead and do the same thing with your leaf, keeping in mind that the majority of it will likely be covered with your metal findings. So just give it a nice coating of color as a background. What I did next was I took my flower and my pair of pliers and I grabbed each petal and I rolled it up. like so. Now what you end up doing, I'm sure you're realizing, is that you're revealing the side of the flower that we haven't inked. So then what I did was I just took my applicator and I went ahead and just inked up that lip that we just folded up. Like so. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our flower and our leaf and we're going to put a little bit of hot glue on our leaf and we're going to glue our flower onto it like so. Okay, and then what I did again was I just used my pliers to kind of roll up the leaf a little bit just to give it a little extra dimension there. Now I have this nice big rhinestone that I'm going to put in the center as well using hot glue. Just like that. There we go. And then what I do next is I cover my leaf with hot glue. And then I go ahead and I sprinkle on some of those metal findings that inevitably end up stuck to my fingers. Now when working with hot glue, of course, it's important not to burn yourself, but you still want to work while that glue is warm. Of course, if it cools down, you could always add a touch more. I'm going to do over here. And then just keep adding these metal findings. Now what I like to do is I like scouring websites for lots of used watch pieces. And that's what I sort of collect and then I distribute them on all of my projects. So here is a close up of our flower with all of its beautiful steampunk -ness to it. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today. Please let me know if you have any questions and have a great rest of the week. Bye. Thank you, Samantha. Samantha is well known to Craft Tech University for her popular paper crafting classes and for her book binding classes. You'll have to check out her classes. She has a class in upcycling books and pretty soon she's going to be offering a class in Coptic stitching where she combines that technique with some steampunk embellishments. It's a beautiful class called Steampunk Couture and you can check it out at crafttechuniversity.com. I'm smelling cupcakes coming from the kitchen. I bet my daughter Mariah is in there whipping up a batch of her fresh carrot cake cupcakes. What do you say you come with me and maybe we can sneak a few? Hey Mariah, you know what? It is smelling so good in here. It smells like you're up to something good.
Are you making something right now? I'm making carrot cake cupcakes. Carrot cake cupcakes? Say that ten times. Carrot cake cupcakes. Carrot cake. I don't think so. You don't think so? You don't, I don't think, think you can so. do it? No. Well, you know that's one of my favorites. I do know that's one of your favorites. You know that's, that's why I'm making them. And you know that's Grandma's favorite. Yes. So that means there's not going to be any left after... That's okay. Yeah. Then I know they're good. Okay. That's right. They are. They're very, very good. So, um, let's get started. Do we start with the wet or the dry ingredients? We're first? starting with the dry ingredients. The dry ingredients. And it looks like you already have some flour in there, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Then um, we I'm gonna, add the baking soda. All right, I'm going to hand that to you. Go ahead and add it. And then, um, and then we add the salt. All right, so we've got, what, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and stir that up. Make sure. So we're just working it in so all those are kind of even in there, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to set that off to the side. Yep. Let's come in, and we're going to do our wet ingredients now. So we have sugar already in here, and the next thing we're going to add is what? Oil? Um, yes, we're going to add the oil. Okay, go ahead and add the oil in here. So it's just regular veggie oil. That's a cup of veggie oil. And if you need the recipe for the carrot cakes, it's on the website at lindapetersonlive.com. So if we forget to give you a measurement or if you miss one, you can go to the website and get it. And then you're going to add, um, looks that's buttermilk, right? Mm hmm Okay, great. So a cup of buttermilk. Oh. It's looking good. Okay, let's break those eggs in here. Almost looks like pina colada mix. I don't think it is though. It doesn't smell like pina colada mix. Teaspoon of vanilla. This one here. No, that's a tablespoon. We need the teaspoon. It's the next one down. I know yeah. it's confusing. So we might you want to make sure that this is pure vanilla because it just tastes better when you're using pure vanilla. Alright. And give me a half a teaspoon of nutmeg over there. Half a teaspoon? Yep. Okay. Put the weight on this one over here. It's fun to be in the kitchen baking with you. And now, let's add a little bit of the carrots. You want to hand me some of the carrots? Maybe just about a handful of carrots over there. So, Brian was chopping up the carrots in the kitchen. And I can tell you that if you have her chop your carrots up, you're going to have carrots flying all over the kitchen. She had them in the sugar and the flour, didn't you? <laughs> you were really going to town chopping up those carrots. I did. Okay, so we've got, I think we did, what, 10 carrots? Was it about 10 carrots? About. Yep. And that makes about two and a half cups of grated carrots then. It's looking good. Okay. Now, let's fold in some of that dry flour that you... Okay, so just a little bit at a time, maybe about a third at a time. Yum, 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 right? I love it when you're in the kitchen baking. Well, yeah. It's great to come in from the studio and smell the cookies. And as my mama would say, or as I tell my mama, you are a good cooker. Do you remember that? All right, need a little more flour. A little more flour. All right. So why don't you go ahead and finish stirring that up? I'm going to okay. get our cupcake hands ready for us here. Now, um, I see you've already preheated the oven to 375, right? Mm -hmm.
and these are going to bake about 10 15 minutes maybe maybe longer maybe Who knows? it just depends right just depends when they're done they're done right when they're done they're done all right that's looking good yum 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 looking good it is looking good The last thing we're going to add is a cup of walnuts. Got to have walnuts. Yum. yum, yum. You are going to make some buttercream frosting for these, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Got to have that. Yum, yum, yum. It's looking good. Okay, I'm ready to get those in. Hopefully, we won't make a mess putting these in the... We'll see, right? We'll see, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, put this over here. Since it's on my side, mm -hmm. I will do the honors here. Hang on. I'm going to fill these up not quite half full because I think they, you know, it rises. I can't wait. Frosties because you know what I have for frosting? What? I have fondant. We're gonna make little fondant carrots. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Think you can do that? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just like making them with polymer clay, except we're gonna make them with fondant. Looking good already. It is looking good. You know the part I hate the most? What's that? Waiting for them to come out of the oven. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Well, because I'm kind of impatient. I want to eat them now. Oh. You know, a lot of times when you make yeah. a cookie dough, I don't... Uh, you have that problem. I do. <laughs> I usually eat the cookie dough before it gets in the oven, right? That's right. Now, this is one kind of dough I don't really think I want to eat. Alright, so we have our tray all ready to go in the oven. And when we come back, we'll have some fresh baked cupcakes, won't we? Yay! Yay! Okay. Now, what do I do with my... Um... So we've just put our last batch of cupcakes in the oven. The other ones that we've gotten out of the oven are in the freezer. They're cooling. You want to make sure that your cupcakes are nice and cold before you add any kind of frosting. That way it won't run all over the place. And now we're going to make our little decorations for the carrot cake. And Mariah, what are we making? We are making carrots. We're making carrots. That's right. We're making carrots out of fondant. And if you're familiar with polymer clay, this is a breeze. So what you're going to want to do with your fondant is mix in green food coloring to make a green ball and orange food coloring to make an orange ball. And then you're going to roll a ball that's a little bit bigger than a pea. Take that and roll that in, uh, either on your hand or against the table to create a little pointed tapered log like I have right here looks like a little teardrop with a point. Now, um, to make it look like the carrot, then you're just going to take and come in with the sides of a toothpick and just make little indentations across the top and the sides. And then you'll probably have to reshape that and refine that just a little bit. Now, to make the leaves of the carrot, I've done the same thing except on a smaller scale. So I have a larger green ball that I rolled to a point here or to a teardrop and then I have two smaller ones on each side or one smaller one on each side. So to put these together then you're just going to take your carrot and put it over the top of your leaves just like that. Really simple. And then you can come back in if you want to with a toothpick and create some little accents. Make it look like it has some leaves. So make as many carrots as you need to, and now we're ready to frost our cupcakes. Now I'm applying the frosting, and once I get that all smooth, I'm going to um, apply the carrots onto the cake. Okay. 
Mariah, these cupcakes look incredibly delicious. Didn't you do a great job? You've got a beautiful plate full of cupcakes. Good job, babe. Thank you. And you know what, what I'm going to do now? I have no idea. I'm going to get some icing and stick it on your no, nose. No, no, don't. With Maria in the house baking, there's always yummy treats all the time. You can get the recipe on the website at lindapetersonlive.com and be sure and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear what your story is or what your favorite recipes are, especially those that you've shared with your kids or your grandkids. Get, those, get them in the kitchen. Share that together in this time. It's priceless. Well, you know, springtime is a time of year that we see garage sale signs and yard sale signs popping up on every corner. Maybe you know them as boot sales. And occasionally, there's that cha-ching where we find that little something-something that we can take someone else's trash and turn it into a treasure. I'm not too proud to call myself a garage sailor or a dumpster diver. And this next project that was inspired by my friend Heidi Borchers of the Eco Heidi Show just does just that. I've taken a jar that I normally would have thrown away in my kitchen and I've added some, you guessed it, craft porcelain to create a vintage inspired decorative jar. I'm really excited to be sharing this project with you. It's actually an upcycle project and I'm going to be using a jar that normally I would throw away in the kitchen and we're going to combine that with some beautiful air dry clay porcelain like roses to create kind of a vintage chic project so let me show you all the uh, materials that you'll need to get started first of all I'm using craft porcelain this is a cold porcelain clay it comes in a tub and it comes in this off-white color this is the jar that I'm using to decorate, and um, it came from some horseradish. So you can use any jar that you want, any shape that you particularly like. Also, I have just a little container of water, very small container of water, and a clay shaper. This is a rubber tip tool, and as you can see, mine's well loved. But if you don't have this kind of a tool, a knitting needle works just fine. All right, before we actually begin our roses, what you're going to want to do is decoupage some, some papers on top of your um, lid or you can paint over it, whatever you want to do to cover up all the wording and you want to make sure that you do the sides. Do that first because that way you can let this uh, lay off to the side and dry while we create our roses. Next, you'll want to grab a piece of the clay. This is air dry clay again. It will shrink a little bit as it dries, but it's just as the name implies, it's air dry. So once you open it to air, and once it's exposed to air, it begins its drying process. That means you might want to have a little paper towel, a little wet paper towel laying around that you can wrap some of the extra clay you're not using right away up in it, and that keeps it nice and moist. If it tends to feel a little dry to you, you can add just a little dab of water with your finger and then work that in, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. We're not going to be using any more clay than like a, a pea-shaped little ball. So they're just little pinches between your fingers, the amount of clay that we're going to use each time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually roll this into a ball. My fingers. It doesn't have to be a perfect ball. And then I'm going to press it flat. And you notice as I massage it between my two fingers here, I'm actually flattening it and I'm stretching it. And I'm stretching it and elongating it side to side. Okay, so that's what you want. And you want this top part here, which may be the bottom to you, very thin. So I just kind of press that with my fingers, just like that. The next thing to do to create the center portion of your rose is you fold the corner over and then roll from end to end. And this is how you can create a really, really easy rosebud. See how super simple that was? Super simple. And then you can come back. See that there kind of broke a little bit, but I can reattach that. There we go. Okay. 
and I can refine these petals because this clay when it dries it dries so hard and so firm that it will resist any kind of breakage even if those edges are really thin so at this point we've created our rosebud and you can stop at this point if you want to create a bunch of little rosebuds just like I have here or you can continue to make a bigger rose and the way you do that we're going to create the petals now and generally I put three to five petals on each rose my clay is just a little it gets kind of hot in this room with all the lights and everything that I have going on so sometimes it dries out just on the outside there we go okay again I'm working with just a pea-sized ball of clay and my hands are a little sticky. This time, instead of pressing it flat and stretching it out, I'm going to press it flat and rotate it. And that way, it maintains kind of a circular shape. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect circle. In fact, we don't want a perfect circle at all because things in nature aren't always perfect, are they? So, you'll see that a little bit of clay goes a long, long, long way. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just ruffling those edges, thinning them out. So this is our petal. And now we're going to apply it to the base of, or the middle portion of our flower. Now, um, remember when we wrapped it around, we ha it ended right here. So this line right here, we're going to match up with the center of our petal. Press it over, and then press side down and side down. The reason you don't want to press too high on your sides is because you won't be able to open up your rows later on. And then you're going to come in and you're going to ruffle and refine. Now let's put another petal on. We're going to do the exact same thing. Loosen up my clay. This clay dries to a beautiful porcelain-like finish. I think you'll really be amazed. And you don't necessarily have to seal it, um, but I wouldn't get it in contact with any kind of moisture or water or anything like that. But it'll last for years and years. Alright, so we're going to shape this petal the same way that we did before. Feather out those edges. And this is just a repeat, really, of what we did the last time. We ended our rows right here, so we're going to take this line right here and match it up with the center of our next petal and press it down side to side. Now you're going to keep doing this over and over again until your rose is as big as you want. And generally, for the most part, I put three, five, or seven petals in because I'm making kind of smaller roses. But you can certainly make as many petals as you want and open your rose as big as you want. So this is just a repeat process around and around. You'll notice as you work with this, you get a little tail. And all you have to do is just come in with a pair of scissors and just snip that off and you can use this part again. Now I'll just take that part that I snipped off and let's create some of the leaves. So I'm going to start out again with the ball. And I'm going to press this ball flat. This time I want kind of a point as I feather out. And I'm going to lay it on to my table. Now with the clay shaper, you're going to draw straight down. And you'll see, you just go over it, over and over and over. And if that part just flaked off, that's okay. So I can press that back together. Okay, and start over. It's better to go over with lighter strokes more often than it is one big heavy stroke. So as you can see, I'm letting the clay grab that clay shaper and it's bringing it down to the edges it's making those little veins so imagine 
the veins on a leaf or maybe you can imagine drawing the lines on a feather. This is what you're going to want. And it's okay that it's all roughly right here. So now you're going to take and you're going at the, at the bottom, at the rounded edge, you're going to press it together and then press it flat. I usually leave these little tails on because that helps to glue it in. Okay? So you're going to make several leaves and several flowers, generally threes, fives, make odd number um, flowers and leaves. Now what you're going to do, once you get all those together, I'm going to show you on this piece that I have already finished here. I've decoupaged, as you can see, even the edges and painted. And all I've done is I've arranged my flowers and I've glued them on with some tacky glue. You're going to want to let this tacky glue um, dry for at least 24 hours before you move it. That way you can make sure that all your roses are in place. But I have a finished one and I can't wait to show you what it looks like. So give Craft Porcelain a try. I know you will love it. I have a very limited supply available on my website at lindapetersonlive.com, so hurry while supplies last. Well, before I say my goodbyes and my thank yous, I want to remind you that there is a new show each week on the Cool to Craft Network. We would love to have you join us, and you can get more information about that at cooltocraft.com. Have you signed up for the Cool to Craft newsletter? If not, Here's Tiffany to tell you how and to tell you all about our giveaways. You're invited. Sign up today for the Cool to Craft newsletter from FadeCrafts.com. It's an easy way to have new, creative, and crafty ideas delivered right to your email inbox, featuring photo and instruction tutorials from your favorite crafting hosts and designers, along with featured videos, favorite picks, giveaways, and more. It's a great follow-up to each week's Cool to Craft channel shows. Sit back and enjoy the creative ideas we bring to life. Go to cooltocraft.com to sign up today. Well, that's going to wrap up this show. Thank you so much for joining me and celebrating spring right alongside me. I also want to extend a very special thank you to my guests, Samantha Starr and Mariah Welsh. So until next time, remember, keep doing what you love and keep living the creative life. Bye-bye, everyone.